you're deluding yourself into thinking I'm not a carb addict. You're wrong. You're a carb addict. And if you're a carb addict, you have to abstain. And you can't abstain because the cravings are killing you. They're torturing you. You have to convert your physiology to fat burning. And in order to do that, you have to have a strategy. Well, good morning, everybody. It's me, Mitch, and it's early on Friday morning. I don't usually make videos this early, but I wake up with all kinds of thoughts in my head. And this morning, I went ahead and answered a bunch of comments and I get a lot of ideas and kind of get a feel for the pulse of what's going on in the minds and hearts and experiences of people trying to succeed on this lifestyle. And I try to answer all of them and, and identify where the problems are. And I see patterns. And I've seen a couple of distinct patterns develop lately with multiple comments on some of these videos saying exactly the same thing. And I want to help. But I don't want to just give advice that, you know, right off the top, there has to be some meaning to it. It has to be real advice that comes from a real understanding of why. Why is it that so many people can't make it, can't get started, can't shake the addictions? And I know I talk about that a lot, but it is the main problem. It is the main problem it's a problem that is almost taboo, carbohydrate addiction. Nobody wants you talking about that. Nobody wants you to recognize it for what it is. But what it is, is it's the oldest addiction that animals have, especially human animals. It's the oldest addiction. It's the behavior that ensured we survived when we had to eat survival food instead of the real food. And it goes back hundreds of millions of years into our ancestry, long before humans ever even, even evolved or developed. And that old addiction is laughed off by the people that are ruining, ruining the human race with their poisons, endeavoring every day to make them more and more addictive. It's a great business model, but it's a lousy way to live. The comments that I got this morning were primarily about people making it a week or two. And, and they say, Well, I went off, but I got back on. And I went off, but I got back on. Excuse me while I make a little coffee while I talk. Because I still do coffee. I'm not a militant type carnivore. I want to, I do it, I do something that's doable for me. And you have to decide for yourself if you want to add coffee. But coffee is not addictive in a sugar sense. So that's my opinion. Some people will say I'm doing it wrong. I'm doing it my way, <laughs> me and Frank Sinatra. You, you have to decide what your way is. But yeah, whatever way it is, whether it's your way or my way, it's got to work. It's got to be doable. Otherwise, we're all wasting our time here. So I get, I get these comments. I can't stay on it. I can't stay on it. I've made God knows how many videos telling you how to stay on it, how to do it, how to survive the first 30 days. The difference is my message is something you don't hear everywhere else. I tell you to go against all of the crap that you've learned your whole life about how to be on a diet. You don't want to be on a diet because 
That's a bad idea from every standpoint. You don't want to eat less and work harder. Your body thinks that not only are you in a famine, but you're running away from deadly animals. You're at a huge energy deficit, and it's going to do everything it can to get you to cram food in your mouth. No human being can live under that kind of torturous cravings. You're going to cave in. Do just the opposite. Until you get adapted to this, eat like there's no tomorrow. Don't exercise. Don't expend ex excess energy. Do it for a month. You're not going to hurt yourself. So if you gain a few pounds, stop thinking that weight loss is the most important thing. I keep saying this and I keep getting the comments. And I think I get the comments because so many new people where my approach is foreign to them, keep watching my videos and they don't understand it. Those of you that have been with me for a while, you guys get it and you guys are succeeding. And I'm seeing this in my live streams, in the comments, in the private community live streams, people that are, their lives have changed. I get letters from people who have said to me, you know, I've been trying this and trying this, but it wasn't until I saw your video, Mitch, that, and, 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 the things that you told me to do that I actually succeeded. And that that's great. That's great. But more of the comments tell me how, how you're struggling and how you're failing. And the answer, even though you don't hear it from very many people, there are a few, a few carnivore influencers that talk about what they call priming. And what I'm talking about is very similar, if not the same thing. The only way to get over the addictions is to not be hungry. The only way to not be hungry is to eat every time you think about food. Eat until you can't move. Eat until the thought of another bite disgusts you. I'm here to tell you, you are not going to have cravings when the thought of eating another bite of food makes you nauseous, you're not going to have cravings. You have to act fast when you get a craving, when you, when your mind wanders to that crispy cream donut, you have to have something cooked up and ready to eat that instant. And that's not a snack. It has to become a meal. You just keep eating until you don't want to eat anymore. Every time you start to put food in your mouth, you don't stop until you're satiated and the craving's gone away. That means you're going to eat a hell of a lot of food for the first maybe 30 days. This is a conditioning process you have to go through. The thought of losing weight or even improving health conditions shouldn't even be considered in that, in that period of time. Why can't people that I tell this to understand the concept of this? Is it because people only want to be told what to do, but don't think about why they're doing it? There's a basic why behind this, and it goes deep into the physiological responses of our body trying to get back to where it was supposed to be, a fat burner. You have to sacrifice the weight loss goals. You have to sacrifice that feeling of achievement that you think you're going to get if you step on the scale and you lost half a pound. That is not important. You have to pay your dues when you start this. Now, if you're not a carb addict, none of this applies. But if you look at reality, you have to admit Unless you're a carb addict, why would you become a type 2 diabetic? Why would you eat enough sugar when it's not the natural thing to do? To develop type 2 diabetes and put on all that extra weight. If you weren't a carb addict, you, if you're watching this 
and you've been trying and failing all your life like I did, and you find yourself in your 70s and still can't make it work, and you're deluding yourself into thinking, I'm not a carb addict, you're wrong. You're a carb addict. And if you're a carb addict, you have to abstain. And you can't abstain because the cravings are killing you. They're torturing you. You have to convert your physiology to fat burning. And in order to do that, you have to have a strategy that knocks out those cravings the instant they hit you. I came up with this a year and a half ago. It's the first thing in my life that worked for me. And here I am, 138 pounds, cured everything. Don't care about food anymore. Could care less. I eat four or five different types of meat and fat. That's it. I don't want anything else. My next video, I'm going to talk about the other mistake that people make that really just destroys this lifestyle and keeps them from succeeding. This video is about how to get started, the things you need to do, my two rules, throw away the scale, eat till you can't move. Very simple. Why do people not remember these things? Think that they can weigh themselves every day during the first 30 days when their body is wildly swinging up and down, trying to find a new equilibrium. Stay off the scale. Gain weight if you have to. Eat 5,000, 6,000, 10,000 calories. Who cares? Just eat till you can't eat anymore. You have to do that. If you're a severe carb addict, it's the only way that you can rewire your brain to not have the panic response that causes these cravings and force you down the candy aisle once again. We all know that feeling. We all think we're in control. We are not. In fact, just for the fun of it, I'm putting a link to a video in the description here to a PBS documentary that will show you exactly Who's in charge in your head? And it's not you. It's your subconscious mind programmed by millions of years of evolution to survive. And that's where the sugar cravings come from. And even though in this video, it doesn't mention sugar cravings, it makes a hell of a case with evidence, studies, lab, lab experiments showing you how your mind, your subconscious mind is really in charge. And that's where the cravings live, and we are all helpless there. We don't have the willpower, the free will, or any conscious control when our subconscious thinks it needs to do something because survival is at stake. Watch that video. It's an hour long. It's fascinating. Start thinking about the whys of, of our behavior not just the instructions on, well, I can eat this and I can't eat that. And that's easy and it's simple. And then you can't make it work. If I sound a little frustrated, I am. I hear the same things over and over again. I know the answers. I know them because they worked for me. If they worked for me, as raging a carb addict as I was, they can work for you. If I can be satisfied with the limited range of foods that I eat and the fact that I never snack between meals, I don't want any of that stuff anymore. If that can happen to me, it can happen to you. I know what I did to achieve this, and it was the easiest thing in my life. I just had to understand the why, why I was doing this. I had to ex accept the validity that there was a real biological and physiological reason why this thing that I had discovered after all these years actually worked. 
leaving me, like I've said before, a carnivore, not on a carnivore diet, but identifying and being able to say, I am a carnivore. Let me tell you how I got here. I guess this was a little bit of a rant. Rants come from frustration. I want to help. I want to help people. I feel, I feel the frustration in, in, in the messages I get. And I get hundreds of them every day. Emails, two types. Thank you, you saved my life type. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It's not working for me type. I like the first type better. I want to see you writing me those kind of emails. It's not complicated. And the change will happen. But you have to believe, you have to, you have to believe that it does happen and give it a chance. Go through the minor discomfort the first few weeks when your body is changing over. Yeah, you might, you might feel tired. You might feel lack of energy. This is normal. You can't make such a major physiological change to the way your body generates its energy without that. But it happens fairly quickly. And with that change comes the rewiring of your brain to stop needing sugar as your primary fuel. Your subconscious knows what foods to direct you toward once, once that physiological change has happened. And it happens without your conscious knowledge. All of a sudden, the cravings are gone. You stop thinking about those foods. You start enjoying the taste of a limited number of protein and fat containing foods. It is amazing. I'm not the only one. I've, I've read hundreds of emails and, and messages from you telling me how this happened to you. I have people on my live streams with me. It's like a revival, testifying how it happened to them. We were severe carb addicts, overweight, sick. It all fixed itself. Everybody wants to do this now. Very few can because most of the advice we're getting is just what foods to eat, but not how to overcome the destructive psychology of our brains constantly on a hunt for more sugar. This way works. And it's so simple. It's counterintuitive and everybody will tell you you're out of your mind. It works. And when you get there, like I have, you'll look at the rest of the world with pity as they tell you you're crazy and waddle off to the doctor's office to get their prescription for their insulin. And there's nothing that you can do to change their mind because they are just so brainwashed. At any rate, I'm going to have my coffee. I go on and on if you let me. You guys take the rest of the day off. Think about what I said. But most importantly, eat meat. 